I uh, am starting a new project. It's an Orc Bomber. Uh, as with all my videos, I don't like to show the initial, you know, common beginning steps. I kind of like start, you know, where the good stuff starts. I've already um, pre-primed certain parts of the model uh, white and then subsequently painted it the first shade of yellow. I have pieces that I'm painting separately mounted on sprues. You know, the orc. It's the model itself. Um, a lot of open space in here where I'm going to be putting wiring, some lights. There's going to be jet engine lights in the back. There's going to be jet engine lights. This is the, the main engine. I'm using the extra large size uh, jet engine here. That's going to look pretty cool. Boom. There's a... The vehicle's modified a bit, so the Grot Gunner is in between two tail fins there. Magnetized. LED mounted under here. And that is an animated LED. That's cool, right? I think so. Modified the big bombs to look like fuel tanks. I'm going to add some decals and extra weathering on there. I'm going to be using a bunch of different Fallout Hobbies products. Uh, weathering powders at the end. LED kits for in here. I'm going to be doing a lot of decaling on this. I'm going to be using, I don't know if you can see this too well, our white checker pattern decals. I'm going to use some elements from our orc uh, green skin glyphs decal sheet. Some very cool, let's get that in focus there. There you go. Very tiny little orc text there. Battle damage decal sheet. This is super fun. This is so if you want to add some like bullet holes, some damage, you can decal that right onto the model. That'll be towards the end. This is a very fun decal sheet. Green skin graffiti. I've got a lot of different symbols in it, a lot of graffiti. You know, just uh, silly stuff I made up, you know, like crumpin ain't dead. I don't know. Grubbins for nubbins. It's fun stuff. And they're in different scales, so you can put some tiny graffiti on the side of vehicles and whatnot. And I'm also going to be doing this vehicle two-tone. The front's going to be black, the back is going to be yellow, and there's going to be a checker pattern transition across the wings. So for that, I'm going to be using our uh, package says chevrons. It's actually checkers. I put it in the wrong package. Our checker pattern stencil. little things sticking there. No worries, we'll fix that. This side's better. So we'll, I'll show you how to apply the stencil properly across the wing to create a little two-tone transition, which I think will look pretty cool. And, uh, you know, we're gonna go, we're gonna go from there. I think this will be a pretty quick project gonna do a little red spiral on the nose so next thing I gotta apply the remaining yellow this is a really brown yellow I'm gonna airbrush some uh, Uriel yellow over top of it to brighten it up so let's clear the let's clear the table and get that started having a little airbrush difficulty getting a little spitting but I think I worked most of that out Using some thinned Uriel, creating a nice, uh, nice fade here. Keep in mind, this is going to be black up front, so I'm only really worried about the back section. I'm not really worried about the front section too much. I have all the individual pods and missiles laid out. 
they already primed black. I'm hitting them with some dark sea gray. Just to create a little bit of definition. I'm gonna come back and paint the cones. Alright, so I'm going to do the nose cone option and I want to do a white spiral on a red cone. It's very easy to do. Just lay a piece of tape down. Get my tiny ruler. Sharp knife. Looks about the right size. Just like a candy cane. And then some fire red, a darker red. It's a little, little area where there was a leak, but I can fix it up with a brush. Point is, now it's pretty fast. And yeah, I'll finish that off with a brush and then I'm going to add a little hand, <coughs> a little hand weathering to it. <clears throat> and as I said earlier in the video, the front is going to be black fading into yellow. So I've masked off the front. I'm gonna do a quick spray of black right here.
So <clears throat> the black's painted and dried. Now I'm going to peel the masking off before moving on to the stenciling aspect of the job. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a black checker pattern that overlaps here and uh, fades out, but I need to um, tape the wing flap pieces down first before I do that. So let me get that done. I'll get that done off camera. So now it's time to, uh, now that the paint has been peeled, as you could see I've done a little bit of additional painting and some areas just blocking out some colors. Uh, now I'm going to be putting the checker stencil pattern along the edges. So th this piece is loose. Uh, well, it was loose. Anyway, it's not connected so I'll be able to pop that out because I want the flaps to be lifted. The pattern stencil is a little bit more complicated than some of the other ones we have. It's kind of a two-step stencil. So I'm going to start first by applying the edge here. I'm overlapping the black just a hair. Just a hair. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of tuck that into there. Now, you take the other side and you have to kind of sync it up, but trust me, the end, the end result's worth it, worth the trouble. So you get it aligned, so it makes like kind of a teeth pattern here. Tuck the excess into there. I'm going to put a bit of blue tape over here to protect this. Paint job. And now, this is the part that some people complain about. Trust me, I understand. But here's the thing. If I made it so that the center square came out with a stencil, it wouldn't be a true checker stencil. It would look like a row of small squares, a row of big squares, a row of small squares. And when I make products, I make products that have a better end result, even if it means a little bit more work for the user. But then again, you're painting a model. It's a pain in the butt sometimes. So, you know, it's all right to take the extra 15 minutes. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the, uh, see all these little, I don't know if you can see, see all these little middle squares? I'm just gonna pop them off with an X-Acto knife and put them in place. This will seriously take a couple minutes. It won't take long at all. Alternatively, if you're just painting black or white checkers, we do have decal sheets. If you don't feel like dealing with uh, the airbrush stencil aspect of it, we do have decal sheets. So you could also do this with just a, a black strip of checker decal. But I want to airbrush this. I'm going to be using a lot of other decals on this, so I like to make it a variety of 
decals and checkers. Decals and stencils, I mean. See, it's only been a it's only been not even a minute, and I've already I'm a quarter of the way through this. Let me finish this up. Alright, so the stencil pattern's on. Took a couple minutes just to do that. should be enough. Let's let that dry for a minute and then take it off. You can save those squares for next time. Just mute it. All right. Not too bad. Slight touch up needed in a few areas where there was some under spray, where there was kind of like a weird shaped vent or something. But that'll take a few minutes. And then once the weathering's on, it'll look pretty solid, I think. There it is, about two minutes of touch up just to fix up some of the overspray areas. It's a nice transition. <clears throat> now I'm going to repeat that on the other sides, but I'm going to do that off camera. Kind of jumping the gun a little bit here, but I want to start applying some decals to the areas that I'm not stenciling. I was using my uh, Fallout Hobbies checker, white checker decals. A very tiny strip of them. And I'm gonna be applying a couple of random ones in some areas. As always, start with Microsol. I'm putting the strip right here. Just some Microsoft on there to preload it. Okay, the decals come off the backer. Just get it in place. Pat it down, let it dry, and then do the microsaw again. And then once it's all done, just cut the excess off. And then we'll do some clear coating. Off camera, I've been doing some extra detailing work. After I removed the stencil, I airbrushed a little Vallejo rust into it and added the uh, pipe piece that I painted separately. You can see I airbrushed some exhaust streaks, airbrushed some rust, did the underside. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna airbrush in back some yellow in some of these areas. I think it's a little overdone in a few spots. But I'm gonna show you over here, this I did not airbrush yet. So I'm gonna do that right now.
one of the things that I really love doing is decaling and a lot of people think I'm crazy for it but I just really like decaling so uh, I'm using the green skin glyph transfer I uh, pulled out a couple select ones from there I'm gonna add some orcish glyphs to areas of the plane Sorry, hit the camera again. Keep doing that. Every damn video. All right, here we go. They're going in the water. Some micro saw. And go, one's gonna go there. One's gonna go on the underside. And the big one. Add it down. We're gonna microsol that in a few moments. a very fun decal sheet. let those dry for a minute before micro sawing. Another sheet that I'm using in decaling is battle damage transfers. So I already cut a few out here. I'm gonna drop them into the water. Get these old pieces out of the way. Oh. 
maybe back a little bit. Yeah, it's a good spot. There we go. Looks like it got strafed. Let those dry for a minute. We'll micro saw them again. Clear coat them. And they'll look like they're airbrushed right onto the model. We add a couple more battle damage pieces in different areas and hit everything. So I've been just decaling away for a little bit now. You can see the decals that I applied here after another coat of. Um, of micro set, <clears throat> micro saw I mean, and then a clear coat. Can't even see the seams on that. Let me go over here. Can't even see the seams. Once I give it the final clear coat, you won't be able to tell the difference. There's the battle damage in there. This is some battle damage that's drying. Adding some, keep hitting the camera, adding some random checker marks around it, more stuff underneath it there, more battle damage, I'm going to show you something cool. So there's these really big blasts that are on the sheet, but I like trimming those down when I'm trying to do something that looks kind of like, uh, like an exhaust blowout. So I'm going to apply this right about here. And then I'm going to trim the excess down accordingly. Micro saw on the fin. What it's going to look like is it's going to look like there was some kind of like vent, like vent blast underneath of here. So I'm going to apply the decal, then I'm going to airbrush a little bit of black in here after the decal is set and in place uh, to kind of blend the decal into the paint job. Alright, we're almost ready. There we go. That's a good spot. This one's probably going to require an extra coat of Microsol because there's panel lines that it's going over. But that's okay. I'm going to apply the first coat now. See, it's already starting to bring out the panel lines right there, which is good. All 
All right, I'm gonna let that dry and come back to it probably two more times with Microsol, and then do a little airbrushing blend job. So, all the decals have been uh, applied, had Microsol added to them, and then were clear coated. So now, one of the things that I'm gonna do is just, just kind of weather them up a little bit to make them blend a little more. I'm gonna take that piece out, I don't wanna get paint on it. See, just, just airbrushing a little bit. To help kind of blend it all together. Same with the missile. One says hit him hard, one says hit him low. Nice. Okay, so the last bit of blending I'm gonna do with the airbrush is I'm gonna airbrush some black in here to kind of blend the uh, blast mark decals into the uh, into the model a little bit more.
good. And then subsequently a little bit of scorching on the underside panels to make it consistent. So I've been working a bit on the model off camera. Missiles pretty much painted up. Hand painting the pilot. I'm not gonna show you all those little details cause it's just, that's not the that's not the point of this video. You know, not the hand painting skills. What I'm doing is trying to show you more like te uh, tips and techniques and cool things you can do. So I just added a little bit of paint chipping as you can see, that blast, that decal is very blended in. Can't even really tell that they're decals at this point. They look painted. It's a little bit of a shimmer on this one, but that'll go away after I clear coat it one more time. Yeah, it's all starting to come together. Some more weathering. Uh, again, these are not bombs for you orc players out there. I modified it so they're just extra fuel tanks. Got the bombs on the underside though. And then I'm going to put the missiles on the wings momentarily. Now give me just a moment and I'm going to get some lighting set up. Because we're going to install the jet engines. Alright, so I um, did a pretty simple wiring job. Got the blinking lights in here. Big jet exhaust, two little jet exhaust. This blue LED will actually go inside the ship to light up some areas. And that's pretty much it. And then the battery cord coming out the bottom, which will go down the base. So that's it, really. It's super easy. I just ran, I just drilled holes, ran the wires right through here, snipped them, tied them up. I'm gonna solder them. And then we're done. Then we're done there. You can see the pilot. He's gonna go in here. There you can see better the flashing on there. You got the Grok gunner. He's got some cool flashing going on too. All right, so let me solder this up and we'll be going on. So the connections have been soldered and I applied liquid rubber on them to uh, protect them from touching each other. Now basically all I'm going to do is glue these pieces in, glue all the jet engine pieces in, and then you know put the canopy piece that's going on over here, and then start adding the missiles into the bottom and then gluing the canopy on. So at this point, I'm pretty much done. Um, you know, the canopies need to go on, on the areas. Not a big deal. I have to paint the bullets that are coming out of there. That's about it. But other than that, it's done. I think it looks all right. And uh, I look forward to uh, showing you guys the next model we're going to do.